Slurring is a very simple part of trumpet playing, but it's also extremely important. So I want to make sure we get you off to a great start with your slurs. And when I speak about slurring, I simply mean moving from one pitch to a different pitch without articulating it. So this is what an articulation would sound like between two pitches. Da, da. If I were to slur those, I would go da. You don't hear that break in there. So in this video, there are going to be three different sections. In the first section, we'll cover how to slur properly, exactly what's expected of you when you want to do a very nice slur. In the second section, we're going to uh, discuss three different things that we want to avoid, three things that are often found in young players who are having trouble with their slurs. And in the third section, I'm going to give you three tips for how to practice slurring to get the most successful results you can. Number one, you want the slurs to be very smooth. You want the sound to be exactly the same between notes, and you want to try to make sure you can feel the air staying connected between notes. Number two, you want the slurs to be as quick as possible. Even if you're playing very slowly and lyrically, the slur should occur at an exact point in time. It shouldn't occur over a half a beat or a beat. It should be a very precise moment. Number three, and most importantly, you want your ear to control the slur. Just like when you're speaking, if you think of the way a word sounds, your body automatically makes it happen. You don't have to think of the spelling of a word or how your lips pronounce a word. You must just think of the sound of the word and your body will handle everything else. Number one, don't change the air between slurs. Try to keep it as steady as you can. A lot of times we're going to want to back the air off when we play lower or slur lower or surge the air and push really hard with the air as we go higher. Number two, and it's pretty similar to number one, don't physically change the pressure just to get the slur out. You may change pressure a little bit when you slur, but that's not something that you're going to want to consciously use as a tool. If your body naturally does that a little bit, that's okay, but we're going to work to minimize it. But again, number two, don't back off the pressure to play lower or apply a lot of pressure as a, as a, as a typical way for you to learn how to slur. That's not a good idea. Number three, and this is very common in young players, make sure when you're slurring to higher pitches, you're not articulating. A lot of people will add in an articulation on the higher notes, and I don't think they're always aware of it as a means to get it out versus really taking the time and figuring out how to slur up to the higher pitches efficiently. Number one, slow down your exercises. I mean go really slow. And this isn't to help you physically figure out how to do it. More importantly, it's to let your ear have more time to hear the pitches. Once your ear can really hear these pitches, you're going to be as efficient as possible. That's going to be the best way for you to do it. And a lot of people think of, of when they're playing something really fast, you slow it down so that way you can technically figure it out. But way more important than technically figuring out is letting the ear have a chance to really hear the pitches and slowing it down is a wonderful method for that. Number two, use a metronome. I think you probably know what those are. Those are the little things that click. You can download apps for your phone or your laptop or you may have a metronome. But using a metronome is extremely important because as we mentioned earlier, a slur must occur at a very exact point in time. And playing with very good time when you're slurring and very steady will help you pick out the exact points in which you want to make your slurs. And that will make your slurs wonderful. Number three, when you slur to lower pitches, try not to let the face collapse. I know we talked about not thinking about things physically, but this is one tip I think that it's worth mentioning that's physical. It's when a lot of people slur lower, and I know I do this a lot myself, so that's why it's one of the tips. When we slur lower, we let this kind of collapse, and we don't want to do that. We want to keep this as steady as possible when we slur low, and then when we come back up, it's almost going to be like a spring is pushing you back up. 
And if you'll do these three things, I think they're going to help you a lot with slurring. If you have any questions about this stuff, and you probably do, please just add a comment in the comment section or send me an email or call the office or something, and I'll be happy to discuss the slurring tips in more depth. There are many world-class trumpet players and, and a lot of world-class trumpet teachers as well, but Mr. Vince Martino is both of those things and he's also a personal friend and someone who's helped me as much as any teacher ever has. Uh, Vince Martino lives in Danville, Kentucky, which is probably near you if you're watching this video, and he is not at all just some local yokel. He is internationally respected for his teaching and his performing. Um, I don't think any teacher has had as much influence on my teaching and how I deal with a studio and try to work with kids as he has. And he's also helped my playing immensely. And he's someone who's inspired me as an artist. Listening to his recordings have helped me a lot. And fortunately, uh, because he does live in Kentucky, I get to hear him play live a lot. So this is someone I would definitely take some time and look for. If you live in the Kentucky area, he's probably going to be playing fairly close to you in the near future. Mr. Vince Martino, world-class teacher, player, and a great friend.